Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my amaryllis plants here. So it has been quite a while since my last update. I think it was back in March so that would make it about five months since I've done an update on this. And back then this plant here was actually in full flower. It had two flower spikes and eight flowers in total so it had I think four on each flower spike. This one at the back here was just coming out of dormancy and not flowering yet but I was expecting it to flower soon because normally whenever and amaryllis goes dormant and then comes out of dormancy. As long as the bowl is big enough, it should flower. And as this flower, this bulb was so large, I was expecting some good flowering from it. But unusually, it hasn't had any flowers whatsoever. Um, which is very strange. And this is my youngest one here at the front, which has grown a lot of leaves since my last video. And so I'm just going to go through each one, say how they've been doing. So starting with the small one, this was actually a baby one that I took off. I think it was this plant on the right hand side. And it was very small at the time, but you can see now it's got some really large leaves. It went dormant this winter, and ever since then the, the leaves have been much larger. I think it grew about three or four leaves in spring. These, these leaves in the middle came a bit later on in spring. So it's grown quite a lot of leaves. As you can see now, there's about seven leaves on the plant. The leaves are quite large, almost the size of a, an adult amaryllis. So it's putting a lot of energy back into its bulb. I will have to repot this. I'll probably wait until autumn time and repot it once it goes dormant. The bulb's certainly been growing but it's quite hard to see the bulb because it is underground at the moment. So you can see that's the bulb there. It's probably about the size of a large onion so it's decent size. Uh, I don't think it's going to flower but uh, it's certainly about three or four times the size as it was when I took it off the mother plant. Maybe even bigger, it's hard to tell when it's buried. But it's still too small to flower even with the season that's left. I don't think it will get big enough to flower by then. And I have had these on a north facing windowsill. Ideally you'd have them on a south facing windowsill to get as much light as possible for flowering but I've had my other windowsills filled with other plants so I haven't had space for these unfortunately. So the, um, the flowering might not be quite as good this year as it has been in previous years. So this one here was the one that had flowered well in spring. It did have a lot of damage on the bulb because when I removed the baby plant it caused an infection and I, I lost almost half the bulb. But if I turn it around you'll actually see it's done really well. This is a side where most of the bulb was missing. And as you can see, it's completely regrown. It looks like it's never had any problems. The bulb's completely grown back. That side is slightly shorter than this side, but it's done well. It's grown back very healthily. The infection hasn't continued and caused any more damage, and this should flower again well uh, come winter. It's maybe not quite as big as it was before the infection started. The bulb's a little bit on the small side, but I'm hoping with a bit more growth over autumn, it should be large enough and we should get flowers on this one again. Now there has been some damage, some of it is from thrips, there's been a lot of thrips in my flat recently. Uh, most of the thrips are now dealt with hopefully, so hopefully I won't get any more damage on the leaves. Um, this one, interestingly, normally when you have an amaryllis, it just grows a lot of leaves after it's finished flowering. Keeps those leaves for the rest of the summer and then they die when it goes dormant. But this one actually grew three new ones. This one in the middle here is actually still growing, you can see it's quite a new fresh one. And this one at the top here is particularly big and it's actually a lot longer than any of the other ones you can see there. It goes right up the top, probably one of the longest leaves I've seen on amaryllis for a while. And I thought, I've seen them almost that big before, but it's uh, generally if it's not enough light. But this grew this one actually in the middle of summer when it would get the most light. It does get direct sunlight, even though it's north wind though still. It does get not direct sunlight in midsummer when this was growing, so that's quite unusual. Because the other leaves were actually grew on the same windowsill in winter and they're a lot smaller. But it's just showing it's, it's probably got a lot of energy at the moment, growing big leaves. I did give it a high nitrogen feed, which is maybe also why it grew so much leaf at the moment. Um, I gave it a high nitrogen in early spring to encourage lots of leaves, so the leaves were large and healthy, so we gather more energy into the bulb. It's now on a low nitrogen feed, high potassium, to encourage the uh, bulb formation and also to encourage flowering next year. So this one here is my largest bulb. Uh, recently it looks like it's starting to go dormant. Now unfortunately this one didn't flower and um, this is, which was quite surprising because this was actually the largest out of any of my bulbs. This was one of the smaller ones because it had rotted off. So I was expecting really good flowering with it being so large. I'm not sure why it didn't flower. It might be to do with it not being cool enough in its dormant phase. So what I might do this year is put it into a colder room during the dormant phase. See if that encourages it to flower. But it's certainly a large enough bulb so it's not the fact that it hasn't got enough energy in the bulb. It is big enough for flowering. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to try and remove some of these leaves. They pull off. I might just pull them off. Uh, just gently, you can see there. I generally don't need to cut them, I'm really, they just pull off when they're ready. This one's still yellowing, so all I'm going to do, just to neaten it up, is cut off the section that's completely dead. 
and let the other bit yellow and it'll absorb any nutrients that are in there. It did actually grow this one recently, which is why it's a bit shorter. Um, it's a bit strange that it's grown a leaf just before it's putting some other ones into dormancy, so I'm not sure why that is. But it's doing well. It, uh, it has got a very big bulb, it's hard to see, but you can tell by the amount of compost that's been pushed up that it's really filling the, the pot and it's pushing a lot of compost up. What I will do in this video is I'm going to remove the, some of the excess uh, papery material here. So I'd normally recommend leaving the, the papery material on our Muniz bulb, but if you get excessive amounts like this, um, then I would gently remove it. And I only take anything that's loose. You don't want to strip down the bulb until it's green colour again, because this actually does protect the bulb, and it is good to have a, a thin layer of brown dead material around it. But when you've had a bulb for three or four years and it gets a bit excessive, then it is good to remove some of the excess. But if you just bought a new bulb, uh, don't touch it, just leave all that brown material on it, unless, as I say, it does seem to be a, an excessive amount and then you can remove it. But as mine has got, as mine's quite an old one, that's why I'm going to be taking it off. I'll do the same with this one, and I'm also going to dust the leaves. The leaves are um, they're really getting quite dusty, you know, they've been around since spring, so I need to remove a lot of the old uh, the dust that's built up on it, and that will let a bit more light into the leaf and hopefully help the bulbs to fatten up. So that's leaf dusted, you can see they're a lot shinier now. I just use the dry tissue. If it's, if these, these leaves only live for one year, so generally a light dusting is fine. Uh, things like rubber plants or plants that have leaves for several years, then I do often use a wet tissue as well as a dry tissue to get it really good clean. But these are looking quite good at the moment. And as I say, it's only one years old, these leaves, so they don't get enough time to get too dusty. So I'll give you guys an update, hopefully when they're going dormant. It shouldn't be too long, This, as I say, this one in the back here does seem to be going dormant already. Um, so that might flower quite early this year. The other ones, they've generally been getting later and later as the years have gone by. So as I say, these two have actually been getting later as the years have gone by. So this one could be really late, could be uh, March or maybe April until it flowers. This one though, because it didn't flower this year and it's starting to go dormant, I think this will be a lot earlier than, than it has been in the last few years. And as for the baby, it's still too small. It's not going to flower this year. It's probably going to be a, next year, hopefully, it should flower. But we'll see how big the bulb gets. As I say, it may need repotting into a slightly larger pot to get it ready for flowering. Also, ideally, I'd have this on a sunnier windowsill to get it more light, get it to build up its bulb a bit faster. Um, but I'm at a premium for sunny windowsills. I don't have a lot. Well, I do, I do have a lot of sunny windowsills, but they're all filled with plants that need the sunlight more than these ones do. So um, the things like peppers and, um, and cacti and things like that that really need full sunlight. But I'll see if I can sacrifice some windowsill space for these. If not, I can maybe put them on my balcony if we get some warmer weather in September. Uh, they do do quite well outside and they get plenty more light that way. Also, the cooler temperatures would help to uh, encourage them to go dormant and start their flowering phase. So that's all for this video. As I say, a quick update on my amaryllis plants. Hopefully, I'll give you an update when they go dormant. And then we'll have some more flowers come late winter, probably, or early spring.